Hi my money people, welcome back. I'm Nat at Mud Magic. Thank you for joining me again for another session on Stevie the Wonder Wheel. So today I thought I would show you me throwing off the hump. I don't do it very often, so because I'm gonna do it today, I thought, well, I might as well, you know, show you, bring you along for the ride, uh, why not? Um, so reasons for throwing off the hump. Um, the main reason people do it is if they are production potters, so you need to throw a whole heap of things in a quick, efficient time frame. I am not a production potter, which is why I very rarely do it. Uh, if you need to do multiples of things, which is why I'm doing it today. And the most important number one reason to throw off the hump, because it is so much fun. I love it. <laughs> so it's satisfying. I love it. Uh, so I've been throwing this morning some noodle bowls. So I want to throw the little matching. So I only ever do little things off the hump. So things like lids, you know, and things like that. But I made some noodle bowls and I want to make some little matching uh, sauce condiment bowls to go with them. So we need them to be similar shapes. So we need a V-shaped one. We need a Matt's favourite shaped one because I don't know what you call it. Cauldron maybe? Cauldron shaped one. Um, and we need a square lotus bowl shaped one. So that one could be interesting doing a little. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to poke my whole noodle holes probably there and there and then do my dents on the other side which would look cool and just out of interest I'll just show you I also threw this morning a chip and dip but in black I haven't done it in black before so that's a newbie for me so let's get into it oh and the other reason and the reason other reason today why I'm doing this is because this is the last of my black clay bag I've got more bags but of that bag so I thought well so that's 600 grams. Each little condiment takes about 200 grams. So I thought if it, it it saves you wastage on clay throwing off the hump as well. So I thought I'll do I'll do that um, because then I should be able to get all three out of this ball. So what centering and everything is the same. So get it stuck to the wheel because I put too much water on it. Let's just push it down. Stick it. So the reason why it saves you time as well is because you only have to prep one ball and you only have to centre one ball. Um, and then you just go for it. And if you haven't done it before, uh, the first time I did it, I was actually in class. My teacher made us all do it. And it is intimidating, but actually once you do it, it's so much fun. And you'll think, oh, why didn't I do that before? So I really like it. So there we go. So yeah, that's your whole ball. Obviously you don't want to start at the bottom. You want to use the top bit first and then move down for each one. So you kind of like bring in your top bit that you're going to work with. And the, um, <laughs> the funny thing you have to really think about, and then you just throw the same as you would. The, um, the thing you have to think about when you're cutting off I can't tell you how many times I've cut through <laughs> and cut through the bottom, cut a hole off the bottom, so that's a bit annoying when you do that, but that's all right. You just re repurpose your clay, reclaim your clay. Um, so yeah, you just, it's like the ball is your, um, well, it's a bit wobbly, but anyway, it's like the ball at the bottom is your wheel, really. So I only want these to be quite small because um, they're only for like soy sauce. So if I want to do this one like the cauldron shape, actually I might, um, yeah, I might just straighten that out and I might just cut that rim off because it is a bit wobbly. And you still want to compress your base and everything, so it's all the same. Uh, 
um, the same concept really. But the other thing I love about this, which I won't really be able to show you today, is if you are throwing lids, and this is what my teacher taught us, because when he taught us, we were doing it for our teapot lids. So if you're throwing lids, now instead of cutting through that to cut it off the hump, you squeeze it in. I don't want to do it because I don't want to ruin the shape of my pot. But you squeeze right in with your fingers as though you're collaring like that. And then you end up like that. And then you sort of go down a bit and pinch it off. And then when you turn it over, you've got your knob for your lid already there. So <laughs> that's a, another benefit because if you do it on the wheel, you're just cutting through straight. So that's another reason I like what well, I like to do um, lids off the hump anyway. So that's... Um, my cauldron shape, I might sort of colour him in just a little bit. So we kind of bring him in. It's going to have to be exactly the same, obviously, as long as he kind of follows the, um, the pattern. And then you can do it spinning or you can do it just like this. So you've got to, this is the part that makes me the most nervous that I'm going to cut through. And then you've got to, got to kind of get it off. There you go. <laughs> so because it's quite wet, it's obviously hard to get off the hump. There we go. And then put him over here to dry. Oh, there you go. See a little pop. And then you can obviously straighten up your bottom when you're trimming it. And then you just go again. That was my cauldron -y one. And then I need a straight edge. And then the last one that I do, I'll do the um, lotus bowl one get on the wheel kind of thing so that it's um, so we're like easier to alter the rim because it's on the wheel. So I'll do the straight edge one. So you kind of like bring it in as though you're doing that against the wheel you know when you're on the wheel and you push in and pull up so you kind of like doing that yes and then you're doing the same in that you're going down in the middle with these little sauce bowls because they are so small I kind of do the shape straight away I don't worry too much about going up into a cylinder and then shaping it I mean I kind of do but I don't really mind if it goes out from the start and if you get them if they're too big which often happens with me then I just cut it off cut the top off because I was just thinking this one might end up being a bit too big. It's very wobbly again so I'm going to have to cut the top off anyway but that's all right. Dry. But see so straight away I could just throw the next one. I don't have to worry about cleaning up my wheel, cleaning up your bats, trimming bottoms, recentering, you know, wedging another ball of clay, it's all done. So that's going to be my V shaped one. I'll just cut that rim off again. And as well too, when I'm actually trimming them and I can put them next to each other, I can have a look and see if it's too big because I think it still looks a bit big. Um, I might just bring out the shape a little bit more so you can get your things in to dip into it. So when you're doing that shape, you would have seen me do it before, but always use a straight edged rib to try and really, you know, as you're pulling it out, really straighten out your edge. Yeah, 
it's quite big. So I might even cut a little bit off now. Because when I sell these as well, I put the little, this little bowl inside the other one and then put the chopsticks across the top. So you don't want these ones too tall because then you can't get your chopsticks across the top. And just thin that out a little tiny bit more. That's better. Okay. And then you want to kind of tell you um, wire where you want it to go through. teacher taught me to do it like this now let's see they kind of this the um, clay sticks to itself kind of thing but that's okay so as you can see I'm not all that good at getting them off but that's all right can get that at trimming so that's the second one done where am I going to put you there we go and then the last one which is going to be the lotus bowl one Um, the yeah the, the square lotus bowl shaped one if I can do it again it doesn't have to match the little sauce bowl so if it doesn't work I can always just um, leave it as a little round bowl that's fine but I'll try so the funny thing is I always find small bowl small tiny little bowls harder to center than the big bowls like I can center five kilos easier than I can center that <laughs> because I think because I'm so heavy handed and it's such a little tiny ball, I'm, I tend to knock it off center. Like when I'm pushing and going like that, I push too hard and tend to sort of knock it off. So the other thing with the noodle bowl part of it you that know, you want to be um, conscious of as you're throwing them because you want to cut the holes in the walls and the little divots to put the chopsticks across. You don't want to make it too wide, like too outwards of a rim because you want the chopsticks to be able to sit across. So that's just another little tip. And then this last one will be nice because I can leave it on the back because I actually did throw this on the back because I've been throwing all morning. So it's just, that system was already on there. So I just did it. You don't obviously have, don't have to. If you're throwing off the hump, you can throw straight off the wheel if you prefer to do that. Which I guess is another benefit that you don't need bats because you're um, cutting it off the hump anyway. So again, for soy sauce, that's huge. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut a lot of that off. And because it's um, I'm only just throwing now. I can re I could re-throw that now if I wanted to. That clay, add it to another ball and re-throw it. And then I'll 
I'll try and do the rim, but I'm not too worried if I don't get it because it's so little. I will um, just leave it round like that. If I can't get it, it doesn't matter. So this is the tool. I've never tried to do it so little. This is the tool that I use because it's rounded on the um, edges. But I don't know. We'll see. So you go zoom like that and then you go to the opposite and you can do six or eight if you want to keep it round you could do six so you do one two three four five six so you wouldn't go opposite because then you wouldn't have even six does that make sense i don't know um so i just eyeball it i know there's probably a lot of potters out there who would get out one of the spinny disc things which I used to have next to me and I don't um, that have the little um, dividers on them so you can see exactly where you should be doing it and that's probably a good idea but I just go just eyeball it yeah <laughs> this is gonna look cute actually and this is exactly the same principle that I do on the larger I think I'm going to really like this set depending on how I glaze it. There we go. So then you just get the water out. And then you can go over all that with the sponge, but I tend more to do that, um, well, use the white finishing sponge anyway, but I tend more to do that when it's, um, when I'm trimming it because you don't it's just so fragile at the moment that you don't want to um, damage it so you might as well wait till it's a bit firmer all right there we go so that's my favorite easy <laughs> of the three There you go, so three little bowls off the one pump. And that one is so cute. Look at it, so cute, matching in with the, really like that. With the big one, mama bear and baby bear. Can get it more straight. <laughs> that's gonna look so cute when that's finished and that's inside, chopsticks are on top. Oh, I can't wait to see that finished. Oh, with glazing <laughs> anyway so that's it thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe still trying to get to my thousand subscribers please help me then i'm going to do a live thank you for watching stay muddy and have a magic day bye